Professor Schelling, you are considered one of the world's leading experts in focal therapy of prostate cancer. Why do most urologists still favor the surgical removal of the prostate despite the many advantages of focal therapy? Well, the answer is as simple as it is disturbing. Most physicians do not understand the biology of prostate cancer. They still think that as long as the cancer is confined to, or in other words, inside the prostate, the removal of the prostate can completely remove the cancer from the body of the patient and cure the patient. Indeed, a simple and convincing concept, but wrong. Unfortunately, the prostate is not an impermeable box with the cancer sealed inside it. Rather, the capsule surrounding the prostate is simply condensed prostatic tissue, riddled with holes through which vessels, nerves and other structures pass, easy escape routes for cancer cells. This means that cancer is never just confined to the organ from which it arises. Cancer cells are always spread throughout the body, which is easily proven by liquid biopsy, the detection of circulating tumor cells in the blood. Surgical excision of the prostate by radical prostatectomy at best removes the part of the cancer located in the prostate, but not the cancer cells spread around the prostate and throughout the body. Surgery, just as any other cancer therapy, is a tumor mass reduction, not a cure. But this contradicts what most urologists say, that surgery, the removal of the prostate, cures the cancer by removing it from the body. Well, this concept is flawed, and this can easily be gleaned from the so-called harm tables, which are available online at the urology department of Johns Hopkins University. The harm tables provide the probability, the likelihood, for a prostate cancer to grow back after the prostate has been removed. This is called a recurrence. Let's have a look at these harm tables. We can use the more accurate post-operative model because we know from MRI whether the cancer is organ confined inside the prostate or has spread beyond the capsule. We have to enter the patient's PSA level, the Gleason score, a measure of the aggressiveness of the cancer, and whether the cancer is organ confined or not. Let's assume a prostate cancer with a PSA between 4 and 10 a Gleason score of 7a, which is confined to the prostate, a fairly innocuous cancer. We press find results and obtain the recurrence rates. The probability for a recurrent cancer three years after radical prostatectomy is 4%, ranging from 1 to 10%. After five years, it is 6%. After seven years, 9%, and after 10 years, 12%, ranging up to 29%. Now let's say the patient has a slightly higher PSA between 10 and 20, and a Gleason score of 7B, still intermediate risk, and the recurrence probability rises to 11% after three years, ranging up to 28%, and 30%, after 10 years, ranging up to over 60%. This thoroughly disproves the concept prostate out, patient cured. And this is urology data, statistics compiled by urologists, something every urologist should be familiar with, and every prostate cancer patient. Okay, what you are saying is that prostatectomy is not the safe choice as which it is often depicted. I suppose if more men knew this, they would think twice before they accept the side effects of surgery. That is exactly our experience when we talk to men at our clinics. Most have been misinformed in two ways. Firstly, that surgery means cure. And secondly, that the side effects of prostatectomy are minor. When indeed 70 to 80 percent of men develop severe erectile dysfunction after prostatectomy and somewhere between 20 and 50 percent urinary incontinence. Again, urology data, which has been published in the urology literature. Now I have learned a lot about the limitations of prostatectomy. 
and begin to understand why you advocate focal therapy. Can you tell us more about your work with irreversible electroporation? Sure. But let me begin with a clarification. Irreversible electroporation is not just focal therapy. It can be used to treat the whole prostate, as with surgery. And in our hands, IRE is as effective as surgery and radiation therapy. The recurrence rates are comparable. The Kaplan-Meier curves from the approximately 700 patients we've treated so far with IRE show that the recurrence rates after IRE are very similar to the recurrence rates after radical prostatectomy. But one of the great advantages of prostate cancer treatment with IRE is the very low rate of side effects. Amongst the 700 men we have treated with IRE, we have never induced any incontinence. And our impotence rate is just below 10%. And we have not just treated early focal cancers, but many advanced cancers. In approximately 250 cases, we have actually performed a total gland ablation, basically a prostatectomy with IRE. So the term focal therapy is somewhat misleading. At our clinics, IRE has become a treatment for any stage of prostate cancer. Actually, we now use IRE for treating patients who cannot be treated with either surgery or radiation therapy anymore because their cancer has, for example, begun to infiltrate the rectum or the bladder. So besides treating early local prostate cancers, we use IRE as a problem solver for advanced prostate cancer, which is not amenable to surgery or radiation therapy anymore. But IRE has one more very important property. It is suitable for treating recurrences. As we have discussed earlier, prostate cancer has a high recurrence rate, independent of the initial treatment. Some experts now see prostate cancer as a chronic, not a deadly disease anymore. Surgery and radiation therapy, but also hormone deprivation therapy, can only be used once and thus have problems with recurrent tumors. IRE can be used any number of times to treat primary prostate cancer and recurrences after any type of primary therapy. In other words, IRE is currently the only technique to address the true nature of prostate cancer, its chronicity. This is indeed very impressive. I have the feeling that a totally new view of prostate cancer is emerging stimulated by new technologies such as IRE. And this view is urgently needed because the old perception of prostate cancer is severely flawed in so many aspects. The whole issue of cancer is very complex and no patient is like any other. While most hospitals still measure every patient by the same yardstick, at Vitus we address individual differences and try to find the best treatment plan for each patient in the proper sense of individualized medicine. Many patients have told us that talking to us at Vitus was one of the best decisions they had ever made, that it literally changed their lives. 